Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I'm finally making the jump from my powered long USB 3 cable to a mini PC that I bought like a year and a half ago. So it's certainly taken me a long time to to make this trip, but I'm finally getting it done. I've had a, plenty of clouds to deal with lately, so I've had plenty of downtime and therefore time to set up and experiment with this mini PC. And I thought I'd share my experiences with you and some things to watch out for for yourself if you go down this path. There are a couple of things I wanted in the remote PC. First of all, I wanted it to have Windows 10 Pro installed so that I could make uh, use of the remote desktop app and control the computer via remote desktop from inside the house. I also wanted at least two USB 3 ports and I wanted expanded expandable internal storage capability because as you know we certainly generate plenty of data in this hobby. And then finally, hey, I want a reason price compared to the price of a long USB cable almost anything's a reasonable price and there are plenty of mini PC options out there that have these other features that are reasonably priced I have certain concerns from an operational standpoint first of all a little concerned about the strength and the reliability of the Wi-Fi signal out in the backyard it's not that far away uh, I still find that it, it can be a bit spotty at times I was concerned about controlling the PC through the remote desktop app from a computer that has a Windows 10 home version. I'm also concerned about the reliability of the computer. As I say, I want a cheap computer, but I'm subjected to some warm, hot nights here, and if this computer is going to be operating for uh, 10 to 11 hours, it's going to be experiencing uh, some higher temperatures than it would indoors. There's always a concern of how reliable the computer is for this kind of operation. Well, the only way to deal with these things is to try to mitigate these risks where possible and to test the system out before its first use. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Some of the risk mitigation options I've included and some uh, results from my first testing outdoors. We generate a ton of data over just one night's worth of imaging. I've got three different camera sensors here. I've got the ASI 1600, which is my camera, the ASI 26 which is an APS-C camera and the ASI 6200 which is a full frame camera and if we just take a look at for me again the longest night of imaging is going to be on the order of about 11 hours and if I look at an exposure on the very short side I don't tend to use exposures below 25 seconds and I rarely use them at 25 seconds but let's just say over an 11 hour imaging session I took all exposures at 25 seconds how much data would that be for my ASI 16 each FITS file that's downloaded is about 32 megabytes and so when you expand that out over this period that's 51 gigabytes of storage which is a lot but it's fairly reasonable. So the story is a little different if you look over at a full frame camera where you're generating about 190 gigabytes of data at this rate. Now this is again a rather extreme upper end estimate of what kind of data requirements you would need. For me the more practical upper bound is going to be with this 100 second exposure which is something I, an exposure I typically use for my broadband filters. And here I would only need 13 gigabytes and for the full frame camera you would only need 48 gigabytes. So that's that's a fairly reasonable number and then if I were to do a narrowband imaging all night for 11 hours at 400 seconds for each sub exposure I'm down to 4 gigabytes for my camera or 12 roughly 12 gigabytes for a full frame camera and there are lots of good options out there for this for example if you have an extra USB 3 port you could use a USB 3 thumb drive and just plug it into the computer before the imaging session and then after the imaging session just copy all the files off the more reliable internal drive onto this drive and then power everything down and pull out the stick and take it inside to load up your processing and data storage computer. The other option I have with this particular PC, they have a, a TF, a trans flash or micro SD slot that can uh, recognize memory cards up to 128 gigabytes. Memory is fairly cheap now, so this is only $20. And I can just plug it in and then at the end of the night copy all the files over from the internal storage onto this card, power everything down, pull out the card, and use it to transfer the data to my other PC. So I think there are a ton of good options out there. A 64 gigabyte uh, storage is actually pretty good and will handle most imaging overnight imaging situations quite well, I think. 
So here's the PC I bought. It's the Ace PC AK1 version. It's got an Intel processor in it with two USB 3 ports, two HDMI ports, and two USB 2 ports. One of the USB 3 ports, I'm going to plug in this long-range antenna to improve my Wi-Fi signal out at the uh, remote PC. So the, the PC is going to sit inside a covered box that will protect it from the environment. This antenna will sit outside and the cable will merely go inside and plug into one of the USB 3 ports. Also concerned about temperature buildup inside that closed box. And I'll show you a picture of the box in a minute. I have this USB powered PC fan I can put in the box and plug it into one of the USB 2 ports and it can just run all night start keeping the air circulating which may help to reduce temperature. But these are some of the things that I want to test in my early uh, evaluation of this setup. And then for internal data storage I have a 128 gigabyte MSATA card that plugs into the bus. It seems to be fairly reliable and I've got this other optional storage. The PC is separable along this line and this bottom part contains a cavity where you can plug in a 500 gigabyte two and a half inch solid state drive unit. This bottom part communicates with the top part through a USB-C port. And then finally we discussed the removable storage options. For me it looks like the micro SD card will be the way that I get data off of this at the end of the night and load up the other PCs. Now one of the things that I've been experiencing with this computer, it doesn't always recognize this drive over here. Sometimes when you boot up it's there and sometimes it's not. That's not something you want to deal with on a night when you're preparing for astrophotography. This drive, it doesn't have any trouble at all seeing this drive over here, so I do have a backup plan, but it's unfortunate that my 500 gigabyte storage is not always accessible, and I'd, I'd hate to have to be rebooting the system over and over again in the hopes that it would finally uh, recognize the existence of that of that hard drive. So as a result of that and some of the flakiness I've noticed with thumb drives plugging them into the USB 2 ports, I don't recommend uh, this particular brand of PC. There are a ton of brands out there. I suggest you look around and get other input but as far as I'm concerned, my input on this particular PC, I would say stay away from it. So the next step is to assemble this system and take it outside and give it a try for an all-night imaging session, although I won't be using my telescope. I'll just use SharpCap and the ASI-120MC with the all-sky lens attached just to have an excuse to collect a bunch of data and have the computer running overnight. Let's log into the computer and I'll give you a tour of the process of accessing the computer over the remote desktop app. Now I've pulled the remote desktop app and pinned it to the start here so that I can just call it up and it's set up to already remember the password and username and so here we are inside that PC. It's not connected to the telescope yet. The main Windows drive that comes with the computer has about 29 gigabytes free which is really not enough to rely on for an imaging session depending on what parameters you're you're using, what how long your sub exposures are and how long you're doing the imaging. So that's why you want to have some extra internal storage. This is that 128 gigabyte uh, MSATA card that plugs in. This one is reliable. This is the main card that I'm using. I can see this 500 gigabyte the solid state drive that's plugged into the bottom caddy under the main body of the computer. And I don't have anything in this 500 gigabyte drive. I did put in the mini PC folder. One thing I did and I recommend, recommend you do, even if you're not going to move towards a remote desktop, I created a drive on the computer I have been using and pulled in all the latest versions of all of the software that are used. Just create a drive on your main computer where you keep all of this software current and then when it's time, if you set up an external computer or you get a new computer, it's nice to have a one-stop shop for all of the latest software and just keep your software versions updated in one spot so that when you do set up a different computer, you'll be good to go and you know you won't miss anything. Going back to the main PC, the drive D is the 128 gigabyte drive. This is where most of the software and all the data will be stored during the night. I keep all as much of the software as I can, I keep it local to this uh, D drive. So I've got the Stellarium, the Plate Solvers, uh, Pegasus Astro Software, Nina's on here. 
and astrophotography tools. All of the programs are set up to write their data out to this observation directory. And so I have tested all the software out. Everything is connected and does connect to the uh, mount and I can control the mount and the cameras. And now it's just a matter of actually uh, going out and using it. Now, one of the things you'll want to do in the computer is to have a few settings that allow you easy access to the PC. For example, again, we're still in the remote PC. One of the things you'll want to do in the systems area Area, uh, make sure that under remote desktop that you're enabled in the remote desk you'll want to modify the power and sleep settings for instance when this is plugged in do not turn off the screen do not go to sleep and then going back over to updates and security you want to change your active hours so that it will not try to do a windows update during a uh, an imaging session so for me i've got the active hours set from 4 p.m to 8 a.m so there's no chance that windows will uh, stop down and do a Windows update during the period when I would be out using this to control my imaging session. Now in the accounts section you will probably want to change your sign-in options. You just want to turn the computer on and have it go uh, and log in and be available right off the bat. You don't want to have to type in a password or have to respond to something on the menu because you're not going to in general have a mouse attached to it or a keyboard or a screen. It's just going to be a box sitting outside and so you want to be able to uh, just press the button and have it go straight to the screen and not ask you for any login. Set the require sign in to never. So those are several of the settings that you're going to want to set up to make sure that the uh, to make sure that the remote PC is not shutting down and doing updates or uh, preventing you from or requiring you to have to have a mouse or keyboard and monitor available to see what's going on. Um, so those are just a few of the settings you're going to want to change on a remote PC to make it uh, easily accessible. And when you're done, we can just sign out. The one night I went out and tested this, it worked very well. And let's go back and, and look at some of the results of that testing. This is my current imaging setup. And at present, I have most of the electronics inside this box that's sealed to protect it from humidity. The ultimate power box is up here. So that blue cable coming down is the cable that's going to plug into the mini PC, which is going to be inside this box. So that USB 3 cable will plug into here. Now, the testing I was doing uh, this first night there, I just used Sharp Cap and the All Sky camera with the ASI 120. Another thing that I was testing out uh, is the temperature buildup inside this box if it's sealed. This is a data, a temperature data logger that I have. I placed it in the box. I have a second one that I held outside just to record the outside air temperature. I also wanted to know what the temperature variation was inside the box versus outside the box. I wasn't sure what kind of heat is going to be generated by this PC and whether or not the fan would actually help to dissipate or control some of that. And so here are the results I got from those two temperature sensors. Now the blue line is the sensor that's in the box. So that's from this guy here. The orange line is from identical unit but hanging outside just in the open air. And I started this test about 6 p.m and concluded the test about eight, 11 hours later at 5 a.m. Now, once I close the box in, then you can see and turn the PC on, you can see that there, there is a delta in temperature here of about uh, one and a half degrees or so. I turned on the fan about right in here. I didn't notice much of a benefit there. At the four hour mark, I took the lid here and just left it ajar about uh, several inches just to let more air come in. The fan was working so it would pull some of that cooler air in, I thought. It didn't make much of a difference either way. Uh, I think I would be fine operating this uh, system over overnight without the fan. It seems like the PC self-heating issue that I had some concerns about is not that big of a deal either. So just to summarize my experience setting up the computer, running it in a quasi imaging session over an 11 hour period, I was able to confirm that my Windows 10 home computer can in fact control and access the Windows 10 Pro computer via remote desktop. So that all worked out very well. The Wi-Fi range extender, that external antenna that I have seems to work pretty well. The signal strength did vary a bit, but uh, for the most part, I had very strong signal and didn't have any dropouts when I was checking in on the 
the progress of the imaging sequence, there's only a small uh, temperature difference from outs the outside air to inside that box. I don't think PC self-heating is a big deal. I'll just have to keep an eye on it. I would say look around. Don't buy this particular brand of PC. Look around and see what people are having good experience with. I've, I've found it seems to be a little flaky in recognizing uh, some thumb drives when you plug them into the external USB ports or the solid state 500 gigabyte drive that I put in the uh, the body of PC. So that's uh, that's not a good look. My uh, first all night quote imaging session unquote with SharpCAF went fine. I was able to check in on the computer via the remote desktop app say every couple of hours just to see how things were going. All things considered I think I'm go for a main engine start. All the software and the drivers are installed. Everything is go on my end. I'm just waiting for some clouds to clear. So clear skies or not. See you guys later.